Alright, I don't have a flag, so I'm going to try and do this live. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. That's really all I know, but let's check out the Toronto Maple Muse. Alright everybody, we are back for another WBE breakdown. This time we're breaking down Sierra's team, the Toronto Maple Muse. I've got my notes off to the side here this time, so if I'm looking weird, that's why. Big important notes of Sierra, I have not actually watched much of her content. She's primarily a TCG and a uh, Pokemon Go player. She has started to break into playing some of the main games, and she mentioned as of recently VGC to prep for the tournament. So. A bit of a newcomer, but I think there's some real potential with this team she's got. First off, we're going to talk gears. The main gears I see with this team are three major ones, and some of them are pretty hilarious. First one being the Talonflame Gale Wings Control of Speed. Having ran Talonflame in our last Climb to Master Ball series, that thing is a monster. To be able to set up Tailwind immediately with priority, or to get off a priority Brave Bird into something, I can see the potential of Talonflame exploding on this team, especially with some of those lower tier speed tiered Pokemon that really could use the boost of a Tailwind. The second strat that's majorly going to be played around with here is the Hustle Core. She's rocking a Drake Zolt, and potentially with the Talonflame to boost it, would be running a Dynamax Drake Zolt and potentially just immediately wiping into some of these Pokemon that really have no way of protecting themselves from such a strong attack. Obviously, Durant being the other strong hustle user right now, actually not drafted in the current league. Maybe it'll be a transaction for later, but no one so far has drafted Durant. Last big strategy here, which I see and is going to be the most hilarious one, I think by far this draft, is the Ditto Core, or as we like to call it, the RNG Core. There's nothing more frightening than seeing a Ditto as one of the six Pokemon brought and wondering, would that potentially come onto the field and what would it transform into? I can definitely see Sierra using this Pokemon to essentially morph and change the way the match is going to go, depending on what Pokemon she gets an imposter transformation into. Potentially Cinderace, potentially another big Dynamax or G-Max Pokemon. Heck, she could even get A-Drive's Togekiss at that point and really start to steal the show back with some potential reverse sweeping with their own Pokemon. Next up, we have our Poke Highlights, as I like to call them. We're going to shorten it down, make it a bit easier. I'm going to talk about each one of the Pokemon very briefly, but we're not going to go too in-depth like we did last time to save some time and get you guys onto the next video. First off, we have G-Max Cinderace. G-Max Cinderace is a huge breaker in the VGC competitive ladder right now. Running Libero, usually running Sucker Punch, Bounce, High Jump Kick, and Pyro Ball, or an equivalent Fire-type move. It is meant to change its typing, get in there, do some maximized out damage, and stay alive with the help of a supporter. A lot of times, the Talent Flame support here might be prevalent for this Pokemon to make sure that it can come in, outspeed anything, and get some of these super effective hits and stop its typing from being a disadvantage. Next up, we see our boy or girl Talon Flame here. As I said before, we're running Gale Wings, gonna be really strong with those Tailwinds, those Brave Birds, maybe get a Flare Blitz off into something. Also has good switching potential with U-Turn, a bunch of other semi-supportive move sets that it can run in the back. Next up, we have Bisharp. Bisharp is a wicked awesome Pokemon to draft, especially side by side with Talon Flame. Defiant user can use those Intimidates to its advantage here. Also very strong, but not the fastest, which is why that Tailwind support from Talonflame will be pivotal if she wants to come in with Bisharp and it potentially breaks some walls. Next up, we have Blastoise, standard Blastoise, not the G-Max set, still really strong potential, Blizzard, Fake Out support, Water Spout, uh, Rapid Spin, Shell Smash potential now too, has many varieties, many speed control sets, many physically bulky sets as well. As I mentioned before, Ditto is the next one. Ditto, pretty simple. It's what does the enemy team have? We're not going to go into it much more than that. It is luck of the draw, but it could be potentially deadly for any opponent. Next up, we have Trevenant. Trevenant, a super strong Pokemon with Forest Curse, changing that typing into a Grass type. Also has the Trick Room potential to reverse Trick Room or set it up for her team. Most of her team's running pretty fast right now, though, so I would see this as a good reverse Trick Room potential and also running Destiny Bond to make sure that if it goes down, it's taken something with it. 
Next up, we have Weezing, probably the best pick by far for Sierra and the Toronto Maple Muse because the Weezing Alolan and regular now gets access to neutralizing gas. And let me tell you, being able to neutralize all abilities on the field might be slightly detrimental to her team as well, but there is real big potential here to remove some of the main abilities that really are reliant on the teams to run and use to their efficiency to get a victory. Obviously, strong support damage as well with Flamethrower, T-Bolt, great special attack user, and pretty good on the physical bulky side as well. Next, we have Clefairy with its signature ability, Friend Guard. Obviously, running a bulky set with an Eviolite on top of it will make Clefairy a pretty big monster to try and deal with. Great support mon with access to moves like Fake Tears, Helping Hand, and other potential saving graces for this team. Here we have Drake Assault, one of the best breakers that was recruited by the Toronto Maple Muse this season. It is strong, it is a hustle ability Pokemon running signature move Bolt Beak. Obviously, Dynamax version of Drake Assault looking super strong with that max lightning coming off of it. Obviously, Life Orb sets are the standard here, but it has so much potential across the board for move set variety just based on what she's trying to set up with her team. Next up, we have Lopany. Lopany, probably the weakest pick, I think, on this team so far, just because it doesn't have much state in the current meta. Obviously, it has fake out potential. It gets access to strong physical moves as well. Another high jump kick user as well, but not the strongest pick overall. Finally, in the back, she picked up Thievil as her last free pick. Thievil, good potential. It doesn't really, again, get used in the meta too much. These are her low tier 4 picks, just with the remaining points she had towards the end of the draft. It does get Snarl, it gets a couple of other dark type moves, and it does have some potential to be maximized in its usage in VGC, but right now it's not one of the major contenders. Alright, let's talk leads. I see three great potential lead sets for this team right now. We're going to see probably a staple be Talonflame and something. My two primary picks here are Talonflame Cinderace and Talonflame Bisharp, with a close third of Talonflame Dracozult. Obviously, Cinderace and Bisharp are both really strong physical attackers, coming out front with that priority Tailwind to be able to come in Dynamax and just start striking things down with their various moves. It's going to be hard to really stop that without having either potential for Trick Room or potential with Fake Out and make sure that that Tailwind does not get up. Next team lead I expect that we'll be seeing here is Clefairy and a couple of different Pokemon. Obviously Clefairy Cinderace, Clefairy Blastoise, and Clefairy Bisharp are all good contenders for that as well. Another great support Mon to be bringing out front, blocking those rock slides, blocking the various spread moves that come in with Friend Guard and making sure that that team stays very safe during the battle. Finally, the last one that I would really just call out as a interesting idea or concept would be to lead Ditto with anything. The amount of times we'll see the Togekiss coming out from a team like A-Drives or another great support Pokemon coming out front, it's just a prediction of which slot it falls into for Ditto to immediately have either a great support set or potentially even a greater offensive set. So assuming she's able to lead correctly with Ditto or switch it in correctly, there is so much potential that Ditto has, it's just impossible to predict. Let's chat about team gaps for a second. There are two major gaps I see for this team right now, one being a typing gap and two being a speed tier gap. The biggest gap I see, as mentioned, was the speed tier gap. This is where most of this team is going to be rocking very fast, especially due to that tailwind potential out of Talonflame. If a team is able to take and get Trick Room up on her, there is no way she will be moving first across the entire battle once Trick Room is set. Obviously Trevenant is a big gap holder here to be able to reverse Trick Room, but I don't think she's going to be able to bring it every week with the limited slot she has to be able to reverse it every time. So making sure that she has mons that are potentially able to play around this or go at a slower speed tier would be prevalent to this. This is where Ditto, I think, also has the potential to fill that gap. If there is a Trick Room team, Ditto could potentially transform into one of the Trick Room sweepers and try and reverse sweep with it as well. Also, as mentioned, the ground and, I would say, ground rock type weakness, a little of both here, is the other weakness this team has, where a lot of the team, whether it's Talonflame, Cinderace, Bisharp, uh, Drakezolt, 
and Lopunny in some regard all have weakness to certain Pokemon like Excadrill and Titar, where if one of them comes in, is able to get Sand up, or somehow able to outspeed with Tailwind as well, we could see the potential for a Reverse Sweep coming immediately afterwards here. Obviously, you could play these Pokemon more tanky, but losing that speed potential or losing that offensive potential of them might be the downfall of this team. Definitely some interesting matches to look forward to out of the Toronto Maple Muse as they go up against certain teams that are carrying these big sweeping ground and or rock types. Last section, we're going to switch up a little bit. I'm not going to run through all the teams. I'm going to call this section the match to watch. The match that I think will be most important to watch with this team will be when Sierra goes up against Kyle A's team. For Sierra to succeed against Kyle A's team, she needs to make sure that she maximizes the potential of her Talon Flame. There is really good potential for him to be bringing that G-Max Urshifu either out front or in the back, and a priority Brave Bird outside of Tailwind into the Urshifu slot is pretty much a one-shot kill every time. Even in its Dynamax or Gigantamax form, the large amount of damage that comes off of an Expert Belt Talon Flame as we proved in our Climb to Master Ball is enough to kill. Look forward to Kyle A and Sierra throwing down later this season in the WBE. Guys, there you have it. Canada has been covered. Toronto is in the match. Best of luck to Sierra in this new season, her first season of the WBE. I'm excited to see what she can potentially pull out with this team and where she will get to in the future. As always, make sure you're checking out our YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button right up here and go check out Sierra's breakdown over here on this side. We'll catch you all for the next breakdown. Peace.